Hey everybody, Jay Super Awesome here. I'd like to welcome you all to week 15 of the Horror Man Slashback Saturday Challenge. This week's slasher movie theme is Religious Slashers, and I will be giving my review for Happy Hell Night. Okay, so getting into the plot for this one. On October 31st, 1963, seven members of the Pi Delta Kappa fraternity were found brutally mutilated following an occult ritual inside Winfield Mausoleum. The sole suspect, depraved priest, Zachary Milius, was immediately locked away in the bowels of the state asylum. 25 years later, a fraternity hazing prank goes terribly wrong and the psychotic ghoul escapes. Now, a relentless evil has been unleashed, and the co-eds of Winfield College will once again face the bloody horror and learn the shocking truth of Happy Hell Night. Okay, so getting into my thoughts for this one. With this week's Slashback Challenge theme of Religious Slashers, I chose to watch and review Happy Hell Night basically because it has a killer priest. Now, considering this slasher movie does have a killer priest, the movie overall doesn't necessarily have a strong religious vibe. One thing that I wanted to mention about the plot description for this movie, it says that it starts off on October 31st, 1963, and that day is actually incorrect, because in the actual movie, the radio clearly says that it's 1965. So the movie starts off in 1965, and a college fraternity prank that was held inside a mausoleum has gone horribly wrong. Basically, they wake up the psychotic priest Malleus, now, the details within this scene are pretty vague, but pretty much anyone who was involved with this occult ritual gets mutilated by Malleus, all but one person who gets away. Malleus does get locked up in the state asylum for the next 25 years, so the movie storyline will progress 25 years. During present time, the same fraternity, the Pi Delta Kappa fraternity, has just come up with the perfect idea for their happy hell night prank. They hear rumors that the psychotic priest is still alive, so they plan to break in the asylum and get a picture. But of course, this is where things go horribly wrong. One thing that I find to be really interesting in this movie is that there are two scenes inside the asylum where we have characters looking in on Malleus through his cell door. The first scene consists of nurses who check in on the patients. The second scene, of course, are the college students who are looking to get their photograph. When the college students are looking in, there is a cross that's kind of stuck in the door, and it clearly wasn't there for the first scene, but I found it to be really interesting that it was there for the second scene, and I thought it was pretty neat because it really seems like the cross is holding the evil inside the room. Now, that wasn't necessarily anything of any importance, but it was definitely something that I noticed. One thing that I really should mention is that the movie does jump back and forth between the two time periods a few times throughout the movie. Overall, I thought Happy Hell Night was a fun and entertaining slasher movie, and where it was released so early in the 90s, it definitely still has that late 80s slasher movie vibe. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the cast of characters we have in Happy Hell Night. So basically, we have a group of college friends who are partying on Hell Night. The main characters would be brothers who find themselves in a lover's triangle. One of the brother's girlfriend actually cheats on him with the other brother. So she's a really nice girl. And what's really odd about this is she's actually sort of set up for the final girl character in this movie. So, yeah, really nice chick. And really odd choice of character to have as the final girl. Another one of the friends of this college group that's a standout is a guy who seems to be videotaping every one of his friends having sex in their room. So that's really creepy. One thing that I probably should mention is that the brothers, their father was actually the sole survivor of the massacre at the beginning of the movie. And the 1965 version of this character was played by Sam Rockwell, who some of you may recognize. But the 25-year present-time version of this character was played by Darren McGavin, 
who I immediately recognized from A Christmas Story, so I thought that was pretty cool. Even though his age does appear to be a lot older than what the character actually should be. There's a lot of side characters in this movie, and they're basically partying college students. We don't really know a lot about them, and they're basically here just to add to the body count. So overall, I really did enjoy the characters in this movie. I didn't think the acting was necessarily all that great, but I didn't think it was terrible either. So for the most part, I was fine with the acting. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the most important part of a slasher movie, that is the killer and the kills. So I really like the killer in this movie. We have a creepy pale looking priest who has sat in his asylum cell for the past 25 years and hasn't moved. He has been waiting patiently for his opportunity to continue his killing spree. Unfortunately, we don't have any backstory on the priest, and that's pretty disappointing. All we know is a group of college students perform a ritual that basically wakes him up, resurrects him, or brings him back, and he begins his rampage. So we really don't know who or what he is. Maybe he's a demon. We don't really know for sure. But I do know that he has supernatural powers. There is a really cool scene in the movie that involves another priest that takes place inside a church. The priest is looking at a cross that has a statue of Jesus. The statue begins to bleed and squirm around on the cross. It's pretty creepy. Later on, we find that the priest is dead hanging upside down on the cross with a crown of barbed wire. Now, the kill does happen off screen, but it's clear that we have crossed over to supernatural territory. Fortunately for us, the killer has a weapon of choice. He likes to use a ice axe. Basically, it has a sharp spike on one end, and the other side is kind of flat for scooping snow. I'm not sure how or why the killer has this weapon, but I'm really glad he does. One thing that was really interesting about the killer was that he actually talked. And I wouldn't consider them to be one-liners. They're more of a short phrase. He would say, no peace no TV, no parking, no problem. And I didn't really find any of this to be funny. And considering the killer is a priest, I kind of felt like he was more referencing the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not this and thou shall not that. It kind of seemed like that was what he was referring to. And as far as the kills go in the movie, the movie does have a pretty decent body count. I thought the kills were very fun and creative, considering most of the kills were with the ice axe. We also do have one throat slicing with a surgical knife, so that was really cool. One of my favorite kill sequences in the movie would be the ice axe through the roof of the car. That was a really cool scene. And overall, the kills in this movie are really fun. And some of them had some pretty decent suspense that would lead up to the kill, so that's really cool. Overall, I really enjoyed Happy Hell Night. It does have some issues with the storyline, but I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. So please like, subscribe, comment below, let me know what you think about Happy Hell Night, and I would like to thank you all for watching.